started recording the webinar. Thank you again, everybody, for being here today. And we're going to get started with the slides. We will have time for discussion and questions after the fact. And I'd like a little bit of feedback from you all that are here today uh, to shape what we focus on in the next couple webinars that are coming up in July and August. So let's go ahead and I think we can get started. Hello and welcome to What the Wiki, Wikimedia Foundation Overview Webinar for June 25th, 2020. I'm Jen Johnson of the State Library of Ohio, and this is the first of three webinars that we'll be hosting regarding the work that the Wikimedia Foundation is doing and how you or your libraries could get involved uh, and participate in that or just utilize the projects for your own needs and for your patrons too. Uh, coming up on July 30th at 2 p.m., we'll be talking about community editing, and that's not just Wikipedia. There's lots of projects to work on. August 27th, we'll be talking at 2 p.m. about adding content to the Wikiverse. And just a reminder, um, I will be sending out email reminders to you, but you can always email me if you would like a specific calendar invite link. Um, the reminder being that all of the webinars are going to be held in Microsoft Teams the way that this one is today. And uh, another reminder that this particular portion of the slideshow is being pre-recorded in order to cut down on possible uh, cat interruptions or neighbor interruptions, but will be around and I'm here the whole time for questions or comments in the chat and uh, questions and discussion after the fact too. So let's go ahead and get started then. And uh, thank you also for being here today again too. So today's agenda, what is the Wikimedia Foundation really? Uh, Wikimedia and Wikipedia, it turns out, are not interchangeable terms. Uh, there's a lot of work going on under the Wikimedia hood and we wanna know what the work that they're doing is. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about that and maybe come up with some other questions or ideas um, for ways to, to use that or maybe possible projects in the future. Wikimedia Foundation is the nonprofit organization that is the support and power behind not only Wikipedia, but many of the other projects that we'll be talking about today. Uh, quotes, a couple of quotes directly from the Wikimedia Foundation um, website. We share a commitment to free knowledge and work together within our community. Uh, we've got the mission statement of Wikimedia Foundation actually here on the right. To empower and engage people around the world to collect and develop educational content under a free license or in the public domain and to disseminate it effectively and globally. Um, as any mission statement should, uh, you know, this informs their work and is evident in the projects that they support. Uh, I think probably one of my uh, favorite turns of phrase in both of these statements, the mission statement and also just this little blur from their site, is that when Wikimedia Foundation says free, they mean free as in speech and free as in beer. And that usage can be applied to basically any of the quotes or, or content um, that you see coming from Wikimedia Foundation. So uh, a couple of fast facts here. We all know Wikipedia and Wikimedia Foundation is popular, but did you know that there are 6,000 views per second across Wikimedia sites? Uh, I have been talking for about three minutes now, so that's hundreds of thousands probably of views um, already. There are 1 billion unique devices that visit Wikipedia Foundation sites every month, and Wikipedia itself is frequently listed as one of the top 10 most visited websites in the world. They're pretty consistent in that ranking. And that's probably uh, partly my fault. I don't know how much you use it, but I use it all. <laughs> so uh, Wikipedia's founders are Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger. Jimmy Wales, uh, pictured here on the left, Larry Sanger on the right. And Larry Sanger, uh, you may or may not know this, I did not know this before working on this project, uh, while not from Ohio, actually attended Ohio State University for both an MA and a PhD and taught philosophy there for some time. So let's go ahead and go back in time a little bit to 1996. Um, 
things were different in the 90s. The internet was a little bit different. Um, everybody was, seemed kind of more like a Wild West feeling of you could set up whatever site you wanted and see where it took you. Uh, and one of those sites was Bombus, um, and that began in 1996. It was started by Jimmy Wales and two other men. They began the site as a guide to the city of Chicago, but over the next couple of years, as they were kind of searching for readership and revenue, they shifted the content of the site to target the North American cisgender heterosexual male demographic. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that. Uh, that particular site has been inactive since 2007, but at the time in 1996, uh, and then you know, in, into the late 90s and early 2000s, um, it, it actually provided the funding and the financial support that got Wikipedia off the ground. So it, it is an integral site into the development of Wikimedia Foundation as a whole. So in 2000, uh, this site Newpedia was created by Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger as editor-in-chief. Newpedia was envisioned as a free encyclopedia on the internet that people could contribute to and would be easier to access than you know, the, the Encyclopedia Britannicas or the world books that many of us had on our shelves in 2000 still, um, because the internet was around, but not as ubiquitous as it is today. Uh, so it was designed to be a very stringent, peer-reviewed web-based encyclopedia and actually supported by volunteer PhDs, because we all know PhDs have tons of extra time to peer review articles for websites for free, right? Uh, so the, the stringent rules and um, ideas that especially Larry Sanger had for the site uh, were great, idealistically speaking, but actually made it really tough to get articles published on the site. Shocker, right? Um, we've all worked in committee or committee situations where it takes a long time to get something done. So it turns out that there were actually only 21 articles published in the first year of Newpedia's existence. So in 2001, um, Larry Sanger and Jimmy Wales also decided to develop a site called Wikipedia. Uh, Larry Sanger came up with that name, portmanteau of the word wiki and encyclopedia, right? Uh, probably not a surprise to a lot of us, but, um, but that's where that term came from. And it was actually envisioned, uh, as I've noted here, to support Newpedia's goals and to kind of be like a feeder site for Newpedia, where it'd be a lot easier to contribute articles, to edit articles, uh, for the community to work together, and then Newpedia was going to pick the uh, the cream of the crop, we'll say, from Wikipedia to put through its rigorous review process and publish on Newpedia, which I guess would have been more of an honor at that time um, to be one of those 21 articles. Um, so Sanger actually left Wikipedia in 2002, uh, but as we know, Wikipedia still lives on and, and the name stuck, right? So going back a little bit, we know that Wikipedia started as a site in 2001, uh, but the Wikimedia Foundation was not actually founded for a couple years after that. The financial support of new media and then also Wikipedia from, uh, from Bombus was not sustainable, shocker, right? Uh, but it was not sustainable. And so the Wikimedia Foundation was incorporated as a nonprofit in 2003 in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, you may or may not recognize over here on the right, we've got the flag of St. Petersburg, Florida. And the Wikipedia trademark, again, just for that one site, Wikipedia, was actually granted by the US uh, Trademark Office in 2006. Wikimedia Foundation was actually originally also planned as a membership organization, uh, which I think was designed to help with their sustainability and their revenues, but it turns out that the laws in Florida to maintain a, a, and run a membership organization of this sort were very complicated. And so Wikimedia's founders just kind of tossed their hands up in the air and said, you know what, we're just going to do the 501c3 and stick with that. And they've stuck with it ever since. Uh, and actually by 
2006, there were already 12 projects up and running aside from Wikipedia. So a lot of the projects that we see and use today have been around for a long time, especially in internet years. That's a really long time ago, right? So a little bit of an aside, um, we, we're throwing around the word wiki here. And wiki, wiki web was the first ever wiki site. Um, it was user editable. That's what a wiki is, a user editable and contributable site. Uh, wiki, wiki web is also very fun to say if you want to do a little bit of beatboxing. Uh, you've got that going for you. So you can see that Ward Cunningham, also here pictured on the right, created that website in 1994. He developed not only the site, but also the software that ran kind of the wiki capability uh, where other internet users would be able to come onto the site and contribute and edit in real time uh, without having to have it run through an update or a review process first. And um, for software trivia nerds, uh, it was written in Perl. Uh, the word wiki has been around even before 1994. It is a Hawaiian word for uh, fast or quick, depending on the, the, the language. Um, and the pronunciations can also vary. Uh, I, in the research that I was doing for this, apparently the, the dominant pronunciation is supposed to be wiki, but much like GIF and JIF, uh, in our case, that ship has sailed. And when we're talking about sites that community members are uploading and, and editing, we, we refer to them as wikis. And so thanks to Ward Cunningham, a wiki was a known term in kind of the tech sphere by the time even new media came about and then uh, Wikipedia was created. And we're wondering about maybe where Wikimedia came from. Well, author Sheldon Rampton was part of the Wikipedia mailing list. And in 2003, just a couple years before Wikimedia Foundation Incorporated, you can see he sent an email, thanks to the wonders of internet technology, we can see the very email that he sent to the list uh, where he referenced another, uh, it's Portmanteau City, another Portmanteau wiki and the word media. I, and I kind of love that he specified media with an M in a written email that everybody could see and would not be you know, worried about the pronunciation of. He was very clear on that fact, it was M for media. And uh, Sheldon Rampton worked on a couple other projects that we'll talk about in a minute too. Um, but I love that we can see this email and really know where uh, the, you know, the term and just the origination of Wikimedia as a named organization really came from. So there were a couple side projects, uh, parenthetical offshoots, I've titled them for the purposes of this presentation. After leaving Wikipedia, Larry Sanger wanted to keep a project going with those stringent guidelines of Newpedia. So he launched Citizendium, which is not quite as mellifluous if you are uh, the beatbox type, but um, pretty indicative of the, the type of work that the project is doing. He launched Citizendium in 2007. He wanted to really focus on an increased, uh, providing an increased reliability for the articles and the information that were there. And the way that he did that was a couple fold actually. He wanted all of the editors and contributors to use their real names, uh, which to this day, uh, that's not actually the case on Wikipedia. Uh, you, you sign up with a username and you do not have to edit or contribute under your real name. Um, he wanted moderators to curb and really you know, moderate uh, unprofessional behavior that would uh, be discouraging to those who were contributing or maybe slant, you know, the content of the site in one direction or the other. And he also wanted to continue that expert oversight with peer review. So it was launched in, in 2007 and it did still have a pretty strict publishing, uh, we'll call it publishing uh, guidelines. So in January 2019, the site uh, as of that time was largely abandoned and had 17,000 articles total posted, but actually only about 166 of them were uh, qualified to go through that peer review process that we talked about earlier. So it's largely a band at this time. Over on the right, we see Sheldon Rampton again. He started a project called Disinfopedia. Um, just love mashing words up to, for our project. So Disinfopedia, as the name would suggest, has to do with disinformation 
in the media and um, that's just being distributed, even not in the media, um, you know, clarifying that and making sure that the correct information is getting out there and is reliable. That morphed into a couple other projects and offshoots that we're not going to get into. Um, there's one called Force Watch. There's another PR Watch that you see a logo for here, and another one called Alec Exposed that has to do with um, lawmaking and legislature uh, across the country. You may have heard of ALEC before, it's an acronym. Uh, so right now the Center for Media and Democracy is very much active and, and manages all of those projects. Uh, they bill themselves as a progressive nonprofit watchdog and advocacy organization. All right, so back to Wikimedia, um, their history up to present day. In 2007, the board of directors of the Wikimedia Foundation voted to move the organization to San Francisco. We see the San Francisco flag here. They wanted to be closer to other tech companies. Uh, you know, this is the beginning, I think, uh, if I have my chronology correct, of the dot-com boom, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit uh, further into it, maybe not the very beginning. Uh, and if you're curious, that banner on the flag is Spanish and it reads gold in peace and iron in war. Since Wikimedia Foundation's move to San Francisco in 2007, they've launched Wikitech and Wikidata. Those are two projects that we'll talk about later in the presentation. And they are currently supported by grants, donations, sponsorships, still a nonprofit organization, as I mentioned. Um, as of fiscal year 19, their net assets are $165,641,425. So very exacting, but uh, a lot of us who maybe have used Wikimedia Foundation projects sometimes see that banner asking for support and donations. Um, if you, like me, have donated, you'll be happy to know that the Oversight Organization Charity Navigator has rated Wikipedia or Wikimedia, excuse me, four out of four stars for uh, quality in uh, nonprofitness uh, in the year 2019. Wikimedia Foundation is managed by a board of trustees. Uh, they, as you can see here, oversee the foundation and its work as its ultimate co corporate authority. The board is made up of 10 members, four who are appointed by the board itself, three who are selected by the community encompassed by all the different Wikimedia projects, two who are selected by Wikimedia affiliates, that would be like chapters, user groups, things like that, and then one emeritus role for the foundation's founder, Jimmy Wales. So uh, we've also got a leadership team for the Wikimedia departments themselves. These are uh, actual staff members of the Wikimedia Foundation, but they manage uh, the rest of the staff too, about 350 staff members at this time. And <clears throat> excuse me, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see Catherine Marr, the chief executive officer and executive director of Wikimedia Foundation, but due to the six degrees of information separation, she is also a board member of the Digital Public Library of America. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so we've got our foundation and history of the organization set. Now, what exactly do they do to make good on their goals of making and keeping knowledge free? Those, those beautiful quotes that we got to hear earlier. Well, let's take a look. It turns out they do a lot. There are 15 public projects listed here and more work that we'll cover in their research and outreach sectors too. Um, I've got them divided into five sections here and those are based on the categories that Wikimedia Foundation has set forth themselves. So let's uh, roll up our digital sleeves and dig in. First, we're gonna look at reference. Uh, we've got Wikipedia, Wikibooks, Wiktionary and Wikiquote here. Wikipedia bills itself as all the world's knowledge. Wikipedia is a free collaborative encyclopedia written in 300 languages by volunteers around the world. On their homepage, they've got a featured article, an in the news section, a did you know section, and an on this day section. Wikibooks, uh, which I'm sorry, uh, the Wikipedia logo is the one that's like the globe and the partially completed puzzle, the puzzle pieces there. Uh, and then we've got Wikibooks, which is the logo in the lower right hand corner. Wikibooks is ebooks and textbooks, ebook textbooks and annotated text, excuse me. Wikibooks aims to build a collection of free ebook resources, including textbooks, 
annotated texts, instructional guides, and manuals. Right now they have over 3,000 books. On their landing page, they've also got featured books, featured children's books, and a featured recipe. And, uh, and that has a photo along with it. So a uh, little, little meal planning while you're looking up your texts, if you're into that sort of thing. We've also got Wiktionary. That's the logo in the upper right, left-hand corner, excuse me, that looks kind of like Scrabble tiles. Uh, this is a dictionary for over 170 languages. Wiktionary is a free multilingual dictionary. The project aims to describe all words of all languages. So, you know, just a little bit of work there. Um, it includes language resources such as a thesaurus, a rhyme guide, and language statistics. Uh, if you are somebody who's into the Google Engram and usage of words over time, uh, this could be another fun feature for you. Right now, they have six million English entries, and they also have a word of the day and a foreign word of the day on their landing page. Lastly, we've got WikiQuote. That's the logo in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, there, you can find quotes across your favorite books, movies, uh, from your favorite authors, and more. WikiQuote is an online collection of sourced quotations from notable people and creative works in over 75 languages. It also includes proverbs, mnemonics, and slogans. Uh, they've got a quote of the day on their landing page and also selected and new pages. And, and I should mention, um, with all of this content that's on these landing pages, like the quote of the day and the word of the day and things like that, a lot of these projects have email listservs um, that, are, of course, are free that you can sign up for if you'd like and have Wikipedia or Wiktionary or WikiQuote just email you every day, uh, you know, an item, an interesting tidbit or fact of the day, uh, maybe help you out on Jeopardy someday. Give me a shout out when you win. <laughs> uh, next, we'll have our collections. Uh, we've got Wikimedia Commons, Wikisource, Wikiversity, and Wikispecies. Wikimedia Commons, which is the logo in the lower left-hand corner here, is 47 million images, photographs, videos, and music files, and counting. Wikimedia Commons is the world's largest free-to-use library of illustrations, photos, drawings, videos, and music. They've got a picture of the day, which is a, a photograph, a media of the day, which could be, you know, illustrations, uh, videos, things like that. And they also run a monthly photo challenge uh, to get people to submit for a specific theme or topic. June's topic, uh, if you would like to submit some photographs or images yourself, is do-it-yourself projects or do-it-at-home projects. And I'm pretty sure I know how they figured out that topic, but it's still a valuable one. Uh, if you've got anything to contribute. Oh, and I do want to note um, all of the images used, even the photographs, and of course the logos in this presentation are sourced from Wikimedia Commons. Wikisource is the free library. Wikisource is that logo that uh, is a round glacier uh, to the right of the Wikimedia Commons one. Wikisource is a library of freely licensed source texts and historical documents, including poetry, government documents, constitutions of many countries, and general literature. They've got some featured texts, new texts, and uh, current collaborations on their landing page. And as you can see, it's a little bit different from the ebooks. Um, it may be things that are like not in book form, like constitutions and government documents and, and, and other things like that. We've also got Wikiversity in the upper left-hand corner with the very stately columns uh, with the globe coming up from behind it in an architectural feat. Uh, at Wikiversity, you can access learning resources, projects, and research at any level of study. Wikiversity is devoted to learning resources, learning projects, and research for use in all levels, types, and styles of education. On their landing page, they've got a featured project, educational picture of the day, and also uh, a new section. And last but not least, in the upper right-hand corner, we've got Wikispecies with a, a fun little play on the DNA. Um, imagery there, and Wikispecies is the free species directory. Wikispecies is a species database for taxonomy that covers living and fossil representatives of animalia, plantae, fungi, bacteria, archaea, protista, and all other forms of life that hopefully I can pronounce correctly in their Latin derivatives. Uh, they have a really fun uh, Twitter account and also an Android app. 
Uh, and, and I really love their tagline that says, wiki species is free because life is in the public domain. And there is an exclamation point on that in case you're wondering. Next up, we've got technology. Uh, Wikidata and MediaWiki. Wikidata is that logo uh, that looks a little bit like a barcode with the signature uh, Wikimedia Foundation colors up at the top here. Wikidata is the database of structured information collaboratively edited. Wikidata acts as central storage of structured data for Wikimedia projects. Structuring data into a machine readable format makes it easier to view, search, edit, curate, use and reuse files. And so if your little librarian heart is going pitter pat right now, I don't blame you. Wikidata is endlessly fascinating and, and useful and interesting uh, as it comes to structured data and, and what can be done with that. And uh, with Wikidata and also uh, on the last slide, Wikimedia Commons combined, those are two projects that we'll especially be talking about in, in much greater depth in upcoming webinars. Uh, but of course, I'd love for you to explore those on your own too. Uh, and then secondly, we've got MediaWiki here. That is the, the logo with the flower on it. MediaWiki is actually the software platform that makes Wikipedia possible. MediaWiki is free and open source wiki software that anyone can use and develop. Yes, that means you. It is the platform on which Wikimedia projects are built. Then uh, in the last category from Wikimedia Foundation, we've got guides. Uh, we've got two of these, obviously, Wiki Voyage and Wiki News. Wiki Voyage is the logo in the lower left, um, maybe a compass needle pointing, uh, pointing all the directions that you want to go. Wiki Voyage is billed as the ultimate travel guide, um, and Wiki Voyage aims to create the world's largest free, complete, and up to date worldwide travel guide. They've got destination info, uh, itineraries, transportation info, uh, phrase books. They've got a featured destination of the month, uh, featured off the beaten path location and travel topic. Uh, this was a really fun discovery for me. I admit I did not even know this existed before I started work on this project. And, and I had a really great time uh, poking around and, and looking at all the, the great information and dreaming of vacations to come. Obviously none of us are taking uh, vacations to Paris or Venice or even uh, Traverse City, Michigan right now, probably, but um, but we look forward to the day that we can. And another benefit that I, I noticed when I was going through Wiki Voyage uh, that is something that's true across all Wikimedia projects is that there's no ads. Uh, you know, when you're researching or when I'm researching uh, my my next trip or even just a, you know, quick road trip to Pittsburgh, um, you're, you're looking in your internet search engines and you're getting ads from hotel companies, booking organizations, um, you know, companies that are trying to get you to book a $59 trip to Aruba, all kinds of things like that. And maybe that's something that you would need eventually, but not necessarily when you're in your research phase. So Wiki Voyage is great for that. And we've also got Wiki News. Uh, speaking of no ads and no financial sponsorship, that's something that's pretty important when it comes to news, I think anyway. Uh, Wiki News bills itself as the free news source. Wiki News provides free content alternative to commercial news sites with articles that are fact checked and peer reviewed. So Wiki News is, um, you know, user contributed information the same way any other Wiki project is. Uh, but they do, I think, a very good job of, of keeping that global perspective. I was reading stories on there that I have never heard mentioned in, you know, the mainstream news here or even not even mainstream news that, that I'm keyed into here in the States. And it was really nice to have that uh, information available, you know, whenever we need it, it's there. And, and obviously uh, the Wiki News logo is the one that's not the Wiki Voyage logo, the blue, <laughs> the blue globe with the the waves radiating off of it there. So, uh, oh, sorry, there was one more um, category from Wikimedia Foundation, and that's collaboration. That would be MetaWiki. And this is their project coordination software tool for global collaboration across all their projects. MetaWiki is a project used as a central hub for various coordination and organization tasks such as discussions affecting multiple wikis or planning upcoming events. This is something that as a contributor to any of the Wikimedia projects, you would be using this. 
um, this MetaWiki tool. So you may have been keeping track on that was only 13 projects. There are two projects that Wikimedia Foundation lists uh, as things that they're working on, but uh, not included in those aforementioned categories. So I did want to make sure to include them. We've got Wikimedia Incubator and also Wikitech. Wikimedia Incubator is that logo down in the lower right hand corner. Uh, I think generally Incubator refers to um, egg sort of uh, imagery and terminology, but anytime I look at that, what does that look like to you? To me, it looks like an avocado. Either way, uh, we're talking about growth and development and um, avocados are delicious. Uh, people like eggs, so everybody wins, right? Wikimedia Incubator is where potential Wikimedia project wikis in new language versions of uh, Wikipedia, Wikibooks, Wikinews, any of those other platforms we just discussed can be arranged, written, tested, and proven worthy of being hosted by the Wikimedia Foundation. So uh, although the test wikis in Wikimedia Incubator don't get their own domains, their own like websites, uh, right at the beginning, they can be read and edited just like any other Wikimedia project. Uh, so think of it kind of like a sandbox for if you wanted to create a Wiki News version that was all in Urdu, uh, that would be, and it didn't already exist, that would be the place that you can get that started, you can start working with other people to collaborate and translate text if you needed, uh, work on layout and features before it's kind of ready for prime time. That Wikimedia Incubator would be the place that you would do that. Wikitech, you notice, has a pretty similar logo to the MediaWiki for the software platform. And that's because Wikitech is the home of documentation related to the technical projects and infrastructure maintained by the Wikimedia Foundation. This includes production systems, Wikimedia Cloud Services computing infrastructure, a virtual private server, Toolforge hosting environment, uh, this would be platform as a service, and many other technical projects such as the beta cluster, which is used to validate new software before deployment to production. And if you are a very under the hood person and very into platform and software development, uh, this is the site that you want to check out. Um, maybe, maybe not right now, maybe when we're done with the webinar, but I won't blame you if you do it right now. I, I can't blame you for being excited. All right, well, as we learned earlier, wiki is not a new term or one that even was invented when Wikipedia was created. So just a moment to clarify what wiki is not. Uh, just because you see something that has the word wiki in its title, that doesn't mean that it's affiliated with Wikimedia, Wikimedia Foundation. You can see I've highlighted the capital W there. Uh, a wiki with a lowercase w is, again, any website built using collaborative editing software. And so some recent examples of that would be WikiLeaks. Um, that was a, a site where people could collaboratively leak information, right, uh, for, for lack of a, a more uh, detailed definition. Uh, WikiHow, you might find if you are searching the internet for ways to, I don't know, fix the kitchen sink or, uh, you know, how to do certain things. You might come up and seen some of those um, illustrations can be pretty uh, interesting and amusing sometimes if you haven't already seen them. And those of us who work in the library world might be familiar with a product called PBWorks, formerly known as PBWiki. I know I've worked at a public library that actually used that as their own internal kind of wiki intranet platform. When learning about the Wikimedia Foundation, it, it really seemed to me that they are constantly asking themselves, what else can we be doing to expand our vision and impact? Uh, so I've got a summary of projects here that demonstrates that commitment and discusses it in a little bit more detail. One of these uh, three tenants that we're going to be talking about right, uh, right now in this section is research. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation says, we find ways to make Wikimedia better. Our goal is to make Wikimedia sites more useful for people seeking knowledge across the globe. Research helps us live up to our mission. We turn research questions into opportunities to empower new readers and contributors. We use research-backed insights 
to inform new technologies, products, and programs. We partner with researchers around the world to better understand knowledge making and sharing. So this is a big one for them. Lots of bullet points, lots of things to talk about, a lot going on, uh, which is great. Uh, you, you know, all the work that they're doing is great. Uh, and you can see some of the highlights of, of those initiatives here. Um, they have been for the past couple years working on building a more uh, positive community culture. This has stemmed from harassment, uh, increase in harassment of editors and others in the Wiki community, uh, which has been pretty unfortunate. But uh, if anybody's ever spent some time publicly on the internet, um, this is probably not a shock to you. Uh, so Wikimedia Foundation has taken some steps to to curtail that um, on both sides of the equation, um, some, some better reporting tools and also some stricter oversight for behavior uh, and, and repercussions for um, bad behavior on the site. Uh, they've got a community health initiative of software tools uh, with measures of success and annual goals for that project, which I think is impressive. You know, a lot of organizations can talk about uh, these kind of diversity and positive culture goals, but are they setting out actual measurable goals and, and measures for success? Um, that's, that's really something that I think is key to that success. They are working on improved quality of and access to citations. Uh, this may have come up for you in the past, if you've ever been reading, um, you know, maybe a Wikipedia article and you want to see the citation that you see a little number for the footnote, takes you to the bottom of the page, you click on the link to go to the citation and see the original source because you're a librarian and you want to make sure it's verifiable, right? Well, what happens if that link is dead or if it's for a journal article that maybe was free at some point, but is now behind a paywall? That's not a great citation. So the Wikimedia Foundation is working to improve the quality of those citations uh, through a number of means. They are also increasing, uh, as we said earlier, uh, goals to increase the diversity and support new editors from all walks of life and uh, to provide a more balanced resource as a whole, uh, a more representative resource and platform for the people in the world who are using it. And libraries do play a role in that too. And we'll talk about that in our next webinar, um, but libraries can play a role in that that is pretty, pretty great. Lastly, they are partnering with Yale Law School to work on intermediary liability protections. And this has to do with legal protections for sites that host links and other user-generated content to not be um, held liable for 100% uh, of the information that's on their site, because if somebody contributed it and it turns out to be incorrect or slanderous or misleading, um, there should be other steps taken before there's legal action taken against the site. Secondly, we've got advocacy. Wikimedia Foundation champions everyone's right to free knowledge online. Wikimedia Foundation says, we protect users' privacy and speech. We educate governments and policymakers about the importance of the free and open internet. Regardless of location or circumstance, everyone has the right to seek and share knowledge. They've been uh, protecting the right to speak and learn freely by working on those intermediary library site laws, uh, copyright, privacy, censorship, access, and other issues. They also publish twice a year transparency reports, which I found very interesting. Uh, it's a report of all of the takedown or alterations requests they receive uh, throughout the that time period, the six month time period, including requests for user information. User information is not available to the public, so requests for that is kind of a big deal. Uh, last year, they received 684 takedown requests and granted zero, so that should give you some idea of how seriously they take uh, not only the transparency to report that those things are happening and who's making those requests, but also, um, you know, that they take a very firm stance on this free and open expression and protection of, uh, you know, the, the information that's on Wikipedia or Wikimedia sites. They also have a lawsuit filed against the National Security Administration, uh, better known as the, or more colloquially known, I should say, as the NSA for uh, very, very 
far-reaching surveillance of wiki partners and contributors. And as far as I know uh, from the research that I could found, it's been a very long drawn out suit and it's still in the courts. Lastly, we've got technology. Uh, we've got a quote here saying, we keep Wikimedia projects fast, reliable, and available to all. From hosting Wikipedia to creating edit checking artificial intelligence, we design and build the open source technology that powers Wikimedia projects. Community volunteers and foundation technologists collaborate on MediaWiki, the platform that makes sharing free knowledge possible. So this is possibly the most concrete or at least visible of Wikimedia Foundation's work, right? This is keeping the lights on. This is keeping the sites up. This is keeping, uh, you know, all the, the words on the page where they're supposed to be instead of swirling around in some weird chaotic version of the internet that I hope we never enter. Um, Wikimedia Foundation reports that they have a 99.7% uptime for their sites, uh, which is pretty dang good. And uptime means the site's there, uh, the site's accessible to you when you want it, uh, with the words all in the right place, with the links all working the way they should. Um, there's no you know, server on the fritz, nobody tripped over the power cord and, and unplugged the entire site. Um, they've also been doing work on making all of the sites more mobile accessible and uh, to use less data, actually using 51% less data. This is extremely important for accessibility, not just for those of us with limited data plans uh, on our cell phones as we tool around town, but very important for those with low, uh, little to low internet access, low bandwidth, uh, maybe lower tech devices in regions of the world that don't have the high internet connectivity that we see in some of the more, uh, the more urban locations. And um, helping NASA, you might see that bullet point there. I've been waiting to get to that one. Uh, this is pretty cool. NASA's internal wiki is actually built on MediaWiki. So remember when I said, yes, even you, you can use MediaWiki to create your own wiki platform. Well, NASA did it. And, and yes, they're pretty good with technology, but if they can do it, I believe in you and I believe you can do it too. Lastly, uh, Wikimedia Foundation really puts their money where their mouth is and supports uh, programs for underrepresented groups in tech, both in the developer community and also in the editor and uh, institutional community as well. All right, so uh, I'm glad that I recorded that because we had a couple of incidents here <laughs> uh, while we were going. So thank you all for uh, for um, sitting through that and hopefully learn some interesting things. Um, I do, let me go ahead. I am actually gonna stop sharing and pull up the call again. And I do have, looks like, yes, yeah, some time for questions um, or, if anybody has any um, questions about the platforms that we talked about, I know it's a lot of information to, you know, to fit into a small amount of time. Um, but I am planning on um, the editing. I have a slide for that too, actually. I just didn't want to include it in the recording. Um, for the next show, uh, the next webinar, excuse me, this is not a, a television show. I've been binging too much during quarantine. And uh, focusing on the community editing uh, portion of how you or your library can support the work that Wikipedia is doing and how you can be involved in that. And let me see here. Uh, does anybody have any questions about uh, specific platforms that you would like to learn more about next time or just um, talk more about with me in the future if you can attend the next webinar if you want to see on the uh, the recording once we are able to post it. I'm going to do the the dreaded waiting for everybody to uh, to type if there's any questions to type. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. John 
says that, uh, oh yeah, some libraries use Internet Archive as their digital library have. I heard of anybody doing that with Wikimedia Commons. Uh, yes, and that's actually uh, one of the things that, um, that I did kind of foreshadow there. Thank you for the dramatic introduction, John. Uh, uh, Wikimedia Commons is a really great platform and tool and, and so many things that meshes really well with digital collections that already exist in a lot of libraries and museums and cultural um, cultural heritage organizations and institutions. Anybody that has a digital collection really of any kind um, can share their copyright free materials on there the same way that you would with Internet Archive for things like books or uh, more published published works. And, and of course, Internet Archive has um, photographs and TV shows and, and you know, the Wayback Machine. They've got a lot going on at Internet Archive, too. That would be probably an even longer webinar than the than the, Wikipedia, the Wikimedia ones. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that next time. But yes, absolutely. There are people who link their their digital collections to Wikimedia Commons uh, to great effect. Um, it really can boost accessibility and usage of uh, of the collections. So uh, let's see, Lisa's asking is Wikitech the site with some shared authorities uh, alternative to uh, that's Library Congress, LCNAF, is that, that's what that terminology is? Yes, yeah, I think that might be uh, Wikidata that, that has those. Wikitech probably has some of the authorities, but that's related more to uh, the, the, the machinations of the software that, that run the Wiki platforms and the sites. Wikidata actually has their own um, structured data and authorities and, and um, a whole structure and system set up where they give everything like a, a Q number to identify it. And that goes across all the languages. And, and it's kind of like if you're in uh, database management, um, that key, that's a unique key for every single item in the database. So it's similar to, you know, Library of Congress uh, subject headings or classification um, authority files and, and name files, uh, similar to that, yeah. And uh, we'll again also be talking a little bit more about Wikidata next time too, because obviously, again, even, you know, we've got the, the images and the di digital collections over here with Wikimedia Commons, but when it comes to Wikidata and that metadata, that structured data, I mean, that's, that's what makes libraries run too. Uh, you know, discovery engines, databases, all all of the tools that libraries use, not just our, our OPACs and and some of the other um, patron facing um, services that we that we employ. So we'll be talking about that a little bit more, and I could probably talk about that forever. So I'll try to um, make that next webinar not all about how cool we could do this, <laughs> but they're both really cool. That's why we're here, right? Because because uh, we're interested in this sort of thing. Uh, and oh, thanks, Lisa. Um, I hope that uh, that you'll be able to attend the next ones too. Uh, let's see. Deb says that uh, oh, your department uses Wiki as the platform for your website. Okay, okay, great. Um, and so you've been using it for a couple of years. Do you find that you have to have a lot of uh, like do you have dedicated staff, or once you get it up and running, does it kind of run itself, or does it require a lot of tweaks and maintenance and upkeep and things like that? If if you if you happen to know that, I guess. Sometimes things like that, especially like at the state library, a lot of that is is um, not in my direct range of vision. So I wouldn't know the answer to that question for a lot of our products. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It, it can take time. It's kind of like that free puppy problem, right? Like uh, you don't have to pay for the puppy, but you have to pay uh, in your time and your energy and your effort to take care of it, even though it's adorable and you love it. Um, so, okay. So you outsourced it and, and it's nice to know that there's outsourcing features though. You know, a lot of problems, either you can throw, or not even problems, but a lot of situations you can either throw money at it or you can throw people at it, uh, hopefully not literally. Uh, but uh, that's good to know that that's an option. I hadn't even heard of that, but that makes sense that the outsourcing options would exist. Um, how does the State Library of Ohio use Wiki? Emily wants to know. Right now, we have started um, in our patron services, our own digital collections that are in Ohio memory. We have started linking up some of our materials with Wikimedia Commons, uh, and some of that is also behind the scenes interlinked with Wikidata. We're exploring that, and, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to 
to host this series um, and talk a little bit more about the options that are available to libraries. It's not, I mean, hackathons and editathons are great, and we will be talking about those. And those are events and tools that you've probably heard of or you know attended, used yourself. But there's so much more to it than just that sort of thing that that Wikimedia Foundation is making available to libraries. And so we don't host our own wiki site um, the way Deb's library does, but um, we I think we use uh, Drupal and we're shifting over to SharePoint because of we're in the Microsoft environment. As you can see today, we're all in the Microsoft environment, but uh, we do have our own intranet. It's just on SharePoint. So we're excited to learn more about both on the, the patron side of having the accessibility to the State Library's digitized content that's in Ohio memory, and also in the Ohio Digital Network and the DPLA side, how that can be um, implemented in other organizations across the state. So I'm looking forward to talking about that in July. And oh, okay, and Deb says also regarding their wiki site that you've got staff and volunteers that add information. That's good, um, that you can still kind of have that local um, input and control. Um, I Emily, do not know if OHC uses uh, any of the wiki products. Um, I don't, I can only see the initials for everybody. I don't know if there's anybody from OHC on the call today. Um, most of the interaction that I professionally uh, or personally have with OHC staff is through their digital services department. And so that's going to be like the content DM, um, the, you know, the Ohio memory products, but they may very well use it for some of their own um, other projects in the museum. You know, they do so much great work, um, education and, and their other platforms. So that's a good question, uh, Emily. I can find that out for you, actually. <laughs> Those are good questions. Thank you. Is there anything that aside from uh, Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons, which which we've talked about and mentioned a few times that anybody else would like to see any more uh, in-depth information on how to really get in there? and contribute or how to utilize it either personally, you know, in your own interest, or if you're having an idea for programming in your library or a service it could provide even for your library staff, uh, let me know in the chat or you can email me um, later and um, I'll make sure to include that. I think my email address should be on that slide. I'm gonna write down those questions uh, so that I can get back to them and let you know. And we'll give it just a couple more minutes here. Looks like it's 2, 2.56, so we're hitting it pretty good with the time. I know that was a lot, as I said, a lot of information to uh, to put into that webinar, and I appreciate everybody attending today. Uh, we'll see if we've got any more questions popping in. I don't see anything coming up in the chat. Oh, well, thank you too. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, and, and I hope that in the interim period, everybody's able to stay safe and wash your hands, wear a mask uh, so that we can all meet again in the end of July. <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming and have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.